am a Milford Haven man, born here, and my father was a trawler skipper too. And on my ship, we are all born to the sea. The mate is from Swansea, what they call a Swansea Jack. As for the bosun, he came here from Lowestoft. And the third hand came from the opposite direction, from down Devon, from Brixham. The engineer, as you would expect, is a Scotsman. And the cook, the most important member, is, like myself, from Milford Haven. Between us all, we box the compass of the four coasts, the four seas of Britain. And all come here to the Haven. It's mentioned in Shakespeare, and Nelson sang its praises. The finest harbour, everybody said, this side of the Golden Gate. The whole battle fleet could ride at anchor in the roadstead. And on its shores, the dreamers have dreamt their big dreams. We work in the face of the wind. In the good days, these boats would muster a crew of twelve, and down in the fish dock you'd see on any tide a trawler fleet a hundred and fifty strong. Ask the seagulls. Now we're just a handful. Those that's left of us have to work twice as hard. And what would you expect? There's not all that many coming into the trade. I wouldn't say that we count for all that much here in Milford. There's not enough of us for a presence in the town. Yes, there have been times, oh yes, there have been times when people would put money into trawlers, but not for long, not often, not now. been a little bit younger because food rationing was still on the go. I was at school in the summer holidays, yeah. I went with my father in a ship called uh, Poet's Castle of the Swansea. Pleasuring in the August holidays. I was away a month and when I come home, say for 60 hours, we dock Sunday night, we sail Wednesday morning, so you work it out. I've got four children. The twins was nine, and Gavin was eight, and Glyn was two. And when, when Norman went away, how long did he go away for when he was in Milford normally? In Milford he used to do about 12 days, give or take, sometimes 10, 12, give or take, like you know. And if he landed on a Thursday afternoon, we got the weekend home. But if he landed on a Thursday morning, he used to have to go back on a Friday. So I wasn't very fortunate to have long weekends, like you know. Monday was my payday and I'd come home, the children want anything, they'd have it. For, for, um, for all the time I'd been away, if they was wrong, if my wife turned around and said, I'll tell when your father comes home, you'll get so and so and so, I'd, I'd have been the devil, not the father, so it, it don't work like that. It was like Christmas every time he come home. So, and as I say, there's quite a few Fisher families round about, so mixed with them children and they got used to the environment, like, did you find it hard? Well, now and again, it, it's something you get used to. I mean, it, it was a fisherman when I met him. My father was a fisherman. It's, it's, it's just something you get, have to get used to. You know, it's just... It, it, it gets a bit monotonous because you think, oh, I've got to do this again for the kids, I've got to do that. I've got to go to school and see the teachers, you know, take them to pictures, take wherever. And I think, oh, he should be home doing this, like, but it's his job and it's something you just put up with. Yes, in a way, it's a wasted life. Especially you know, since they've been married and the kids, you know. You blink and they're grown up. You, you only see them 48 hours in a month. Well, we're earning money, we're good money. But uh, well, every, every trip I buy for the kids, you know, that's only so they say, gee, thanks, Dad, you know, and they come and make a fuss of me. You know, 48 hours is the only time they see me. 
I miss them. But I had a good wife. She was from fish and stock. Her grandfather was a, a skipper. Her father was a cook, ex-Navy man. After the war, he joined the Heron fleet in Lowestoft first and then came to Milford and made his home here. His father, her grandfather made his home here. She was from fishing stock. She she knew the score. I was going to be be at sea for 12 days and not be in for 60 hours, and I'd be gone for another 12 days. She a damn fine job of bringing up them children, better than I could have expected. When the boys thought about going to sea, were you happy about that? Oh no, no, I didn't want none of them to go. It's, it's a horrible life. It's a, it's a hard life. It's like being thrown in at the deep end and. You just don't know how you're going to get out of it. No, I didn't want none of them to go. But they ended up there and there we are. They missed out on a lot of things, you know, how how those... The everyday life, school life, and the reports, I mean, I know it saved them all, but to actually see them on that day, I think, oh, brilliant, like, you know, I'd show that your dad when he comes home in a couple of months' time or something like that, you know. Yeah, it's a hard life, but it was his life and we had to accept it. A, there's a hell of a difference between mate and skipper, I believe. But when you move up, it's different again because you've got to take the ship to sea and you've got to catch it. You know, when I was mate, I used to worry about catching fish, but not that much, like, you know, because the onus wasn't on me. But then all of a sudden, somebody plonks a lot on you. There's a 110 foot ship, uh, 500 odd horsepower, like six men, so much grub, so much fuel, so much ice. I want you back in 12 days with a trip of fish tether. But you learn more in your first trip skipper than you do in your two and a half years mate. It's not as regards manual work to everything, but you learn to weigh up the situations differently. It's in your mind at sea, like you know, you hear somebody come in, oh they may just made six thousand or something and you know, you're struggling, and oh my God, what are you going to do? But, you know, you you got to make it bad and to appreciate it good and like, but you, you just hope to God that the office see it that way. Plain, just a plain cooking. Never used to do, well, used to bake bread, but never used to do no, and tarts, but no, no fancy with coal fire, coal stove. Some of them were good, you know, some got good ovens and good stoves and others had poor ones, they weren't all good. You know, everybody can't be top and somebody got to be bottom. But that's fishing, it's, it, I should say it's, well it is luck. Unless you've got luck, you, you know. <sighs> the biggest problem was not encouraging young men to go to sea. I mean, I, I've seen a man, he was a fish buyer with a young family, he came to sea as a decky learner, and they gave him £7.50 after 10 days fishing. That was the golden rate for a decky learner. 
He only done the one trip and he went back to selling fish again, buying it and selling it in a van. There, there was no incentive for young men in Milford to go to sea. Well, just the ships are gone and the men have gone. Well, I think if they, even if they had more ships here now, I don't, I don't doubt whether they get the men to crew them now. And most of the jobs they do, going to, going to sea. I know they, they say about going to sea and that. I don't really like it, but for you, well, it's a job. I wouldn't come, I wouldn't stop a show to go on the door. That's all about it. You know, I, you've always been determined on that. I mean, there is times you come out to work when you've got to go on the door with. You don't want to. Well, I'd rather, as I am, cook deck and, you know, doing a bit of each. If you call it constant crew, you know you work together and you got one crew, he knows what he's got to do. And I don't believe in unions at all, so I, I don't see why I should pay a man 50 pence a week to tell me when I, when I can work and when I can't work, or what I can do. When it first started off, I suppose uh, the union was for the working man, but it, it's, it's the union for the union now. He, he's not worried if a working man got a crust of bread in his cupboard. Like I said in the film, when unions first started, they were a good thing for the birth of the union in Wales. They were good for the Welsh miners. That they got them better conditions. But it was never any good to, to the fishing industry. Especially when we went on the share, which meant we were self-employed. You worked 18 hours a day. That was it, that was your call. 18 hours a day on and six off. But in that six off, he was called half an hour before. So that was like 18 and a half. But by the time he would have wash and a smoke and he relaxed, he was ending up on about 20 and four. Pecky's Eagle was 110 foot long and about 25 foot wide. You had to get on. You had to be responsible for each other. If you had an argument, which, which happened now and again, everybody has a bad day. If you had an argument, you, you had to not kiss and make up, but sorry about that. And you got on with things.
Five minutes, Skipper. All in time, Skipper. National Service was fabulous for a discipline point of view. After starting going to sea, I was 16 and a half when I started going up the ladder, so I had men under me at 16 and a half. I went third hand of a ship called the Blue Morris Castle out of the Swansea, I, I believe I was 16 and a half. So I had a couple of men and I was in charge of a watch, so I had two men under me or two or three deckies under me. So I, I, I did respect, I've always respected authority and a person going up the ladder, I was lucky. I went young and I've always gone up, I've gone a little bit further each time, like but authority, oh you must have authority. I suppose the best way to explain it to you is when you first start going to sea, you have one ambition to get out of there and get up to the glass house they call it. And the bloke at the top is God. And I mean with a capital G, because what he because he's got your, his, your life in his hands. A wrong mistake by him and you're all dead, especially if you're sleeping. But swapping jobs and... Because of the way we was employed, you could come, you could have a successful year this year. Next year everything goes pear-shaped. Oh sorry, we haven't got a job for you as captain, you can go as mate. Or if you haven't got, if you don't want to go, you, you, well, you sign the door. Well, a lot of us, yeah, we'd sign the door for a day or two days, but bearing in mind, I left school at 15, apart from my time in the army. I can't ever remember being ashore longer than about five or six weeks before I'd be up the air and gone. Well, as Milford stands at the moment, I can't have a week home, weekend home with my wife because there's only a Monday and a Wednesday market or, or occasional Tuesday and very seldom a Thursday. But from my point of view, if it could be arranged with now and again, perhaps every four trips you could have a weekend off with your wife. Not, not necessarily the ship lose time, but if you could land Friday and have Saturday and Sunday and then sail Monday, like they used to in the old days, if they could go back to that that way of fishing, it would, I think it would far improve the job, in the sense like you, you've seen a bit of life at home, because you come home like we are now landing on a Monday in the middle of the week, there, there's no life. I think a lot of it was when you come ashore, you tried, to, if just say for instance you was away for two weeks, well, you tried to give your partner or your wife or girlfriend two weeks excitement in two days. That's, that's what you used to do. Yes, it was heavy drinking, but at the end of the day, some people can and some people can't, like, you know. Don't get me wrong, I used to drink very, very heavy. But also smoking, people used to smoke. Well, the smoke just chucked you 20, 40, 100 cigarettes on the bar and carry on. 
but he couldn't do that today. See, some idiot would come along and try and pinch him or something like that. Or, well, worse. Worse than that. Right now, all right, people land the fish and it's gone up for auction on the open market. There's such a vast difference in today's market and tomorrow. But all right, this is the law of supply and demand, that I granted. But surely there must be a way somewhere along the line where you can hit a happy medium and say for three months we'll pay you this price. And summer we'll pay you this price, winter we'll pay you this price. And Everybody knows what they're going to earn. Everybody knows what profit they're going to make or loss they're going to make instead of the law on demand and supply. Because very often the boys have come in, they've worked like hell and just take Roker. It'll drop perhaps six or eight pound a box. That's a lot of money by the law of supply and demand. My own personal feeling is every country should have its own limits and it, that country should fish in its own limits and be self-supporting. And yet, common market countries, such as French and Belgium, they've they got the power in the ships. They have these new, well, new ships. And we can go over the ground after them and it's a waste of time. Because they just take everything. to go stand. Half the shops are closed, boarded up. A lot of trades are gone, the blacksmith trades are gone that, that used to keep the trawlers going, repairing the troll doors. Riggers are gone. I was down the dock on Sunday, which is three days ago, and it don't look like a dock. It there's nobody employed. There's maybe five people employed in main, on maintenance. Yet when Trawlers was in Milford Haven, if he wanted a job, you just went down the dock. You could either land the trawlers, you could mend the nets, you could put the grub on the trawlers. There was ice to be done. There was ships to be moved. Everybody who wanted a job could get a job down the dock if they wanted one. What's there now? Nothing, just yachts. In my opinion, Milford wouldn't move with the times. If they'd have possibly changed to beam trawlers, they'd have still been going today. The big beam trawlers from abroad, we know them beamers, we call them. Dragging their heavy gear down there on the sea's bottom, breaking up the muscle beds. A dust bowl they're making, if you can think of it, under the sea. Bumper catches, of course, but for how much longer? Compared with them, I suppose we're inefficient. But let me tell you, Mr. There is such a thing as being too efficient. They'll find out when they've stripped the fishing grounds what will happen then to the factory ships, the freezer ships. What happened to the liners? What happened to the Great Eastern? Survivors, that's what we are, survivors. It's not really an option to say, no, I, I want to stop. You know, it's, it's, it's actually bred into you, really. You, you grow up with it and, you know, I, I can't see any reason for stopping. This point, that's what's happened to Milford, is people just given in. There's been no, no reinvestment and they've just gone away. Milford seemed to not change. Other parts of the country have changed and survived, 
but Mufalaven as a whole didn't seem to change. They were they were still using nets that with you know the family they discarded 20 years ago, and they still carried on using the old, the same same materials. You know, even the nettings were still handmade here until you know you can ask Norman. Norman will tell you it's they used to make them upstairs in coal salt, the women, and they actually used to hand make the nets braiding. You know, uh, other parts of the country, it was just, it was all made by a machine. And I think, you know, that's, that's a lot of it. They just wouldn't, they wouldn't turn the corner and start going forward. But I still believe there's a future in it. You know, there's less and less, less and less bolts all around the country, and so, somewhere the fish has got to come from. I wouldn't like to be sat, sat down at the table in the fish and chip shop eating stuff from abroad all the time. Our game takes a long time to learn. What's in our heads didn't get there overnight. Didn't get there by correspondence course. The fishing grounds, you've got to know them. You've got to have sailed them. It's the Celtic Sea now, and the talk in Milford is all of oil, refineries, and super tankers. But you don't see all that many jobs for the locals, do you? And booms can go bust. We've seen them come and go, and proud ships sold for scrap. This is a land with a long memory, and we will still be here. Ask the seagulls. We will still be working in the face of the wind.